All right, this is the second video, the close reading video. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what close reading is. I'm going to preview the first lesson, which focuses on close reading, and overview the close reading essay. So, the majority of this course is spent learning how to read and write about texts, and three of the portfolio essays are close reading essays. Why are we focusing on close reading? Close reading provides an excellent framework for college writing. It foregrounds critical thinking, rhetorical analysis, and the writing process. These are the three areas that distinguish college level writing and has application across all college writing contexts and disciplines. It fits the reading and discussion outcomes of LIBA and leads to more sophisticated and proficient writing. It requires students to engage with texts in a direct, unmediated way. Often, students think essay writing means writing to a template uh, and synthesizing authorities, authoritative sources that they have found uh, on the internet. Of course, synthesizing is a big part of college writing, but it is incomplete and incoherent in the absence of one own, one's own judgment and observation. Close reading turns off these other voices so students can hear their own. What are these other voices? They include what others have said about a text, such as scholarship, websites, even the professor. It includes what the text is culturally accepted to mean, that kind of historical reception of the text's meaning. It includes the author's biography as an interpretive lens, and it includes even what a text means to someone personally, that is a private rather than public kind of interpretation. So in a close reading essay, all of these sources are off limits. What is left? Only and everything in the text itself. Close reading requires you to rely on your own powers of observation and reasoning. A few years back, there was a term called the threshold concept going around higher education. It refers to a conceptual pinch point that precedes comprehension and opens up uh, an understanding of a whole field or skill set. They're difficult and students have to wrestle with them and it takes a few times before they pass through a, th a threshold concept. And Teachers agree that college courses can really only teach one or two of them. This is the threshold concept we are teaching in LIBA. Close reading, relying on your own observation. What exactly does close reading look like? Well, the best way to get a feel for it is just by diving in. And that's what we do in the first lesson. So let's talk about that. Sometime during the first few weeks, probably in the week before you launch into the first major essay, you should do the collaborative close reading activity, which I have linked in Foxtail. It's a great lesson plan and there's a natural break in it halfway through, so you can either do it all 75 minutes in one day or break it up into two days. You can read the lesson yourself, but basically in a nutshell, you pick one of the most interesting, juiciest passages from the book you're reading in the first unit, whatever text you choose for that first unit. You divide that passage, about a page worth, maybe, maybe about half a page's worth, uh, into three chunks. Type and print out those chunks in a large font, and in class have students work in small groups to annotate each passage in one per group uh, ex as exhaustively as they can, identifying everything that they see in the passage. They can highlight and look up the definitions of words they don't understand. They can circle phrases that have a certain tone to them. They can look for ambig ambiguous words. They can find patterns in the word choices that are being made. If they know literary devices, they can analyze those. Every 15 minutes, you rotate the passage and the next group continues finding details in the passage that the previous group missed adding those annotations to the ones that were already on the page. That's the first half of the lesson. 
In the second half, the passage is returned to the original groups, and each group writes a thesis statement explaining how the passage is crafted to achieve a certain effect on the reader. Then they write a paragraph supporting their thesis using all the evidence they found in the annotation stage. And they finally read those paragraphs to the class and discuss the differences in their interpretations. It's a great activity and it directly models the close reading process. In fact, it is exactly what they do on their close reading essay assignment, which I will talk about now. You have the assignment in Foxtail. Let me just hit a few points. The assignment asks them to select a short passage from one of the texts from the unit and using close reading strategies, write a four to five page essay arguing for a specific interpretation of the passage. The assignment is broken up into two steps, the exact same steps they did in the collaborative activity. They first print out and annotate the passage they want to analyze. Yeah, printing it out and actually doing it physically is what we want them to do. They look for patterns, they jot down ideas, and then only when they're done with that step separately, they start the writing process. The difference between essays that undergo this first step and those that don't is noticeable. We want students to slow down and see the language before they decide what they're going to argue and what they want to say. The second step is to write the essay. You'll see in the assignment that I've specified an organizational scheme, breaking the essay up into four sections. Uh, it includes a block quote which reproduces the entire passage they're analyzing. Uh, so the essay in final form ends up looking like a huge block quote on the first page. This is a very convenient for you when you're grading, but actually what it's doing is keeping the writer very focused and very near the language that they're analyzing. Notice that there's a new final application uh, section that we've added this year in which we're asking students to discuss how their analysis changes how we understand the larger passage and what its broader real world application might be. Probably the most important sentence in this prompt is at the beginning of step two, where students are directed to, quote, interpret the passage, explaining how it is crafted to achieve a certain effect on the reader. Why the phrase effect on the reader? This is the language of rhetorical analysis. In the rhetorical model of communication, texts are meant to persuade an audience, changing their thinking on a subject or moving them to action. Students need this lens to get underneath the language and see the layers of meaning. They need to do more than simply restate the plain meaning of the passage. And they do that by thinking about how the details in the passage are purposefully chosen to make the reader think and feel a certain way, to, lend the, to lead the reader to a certain conclusion. I also want to note that getting the right interpretation is not at all the point of this essay. Certainly, it can't blatantly contradict the passage and or be logically incoherent, but a rich passage, of course, lends itself to a range of defensible interpretations. What matters is that students make a definite interpretation and defend it with evidence from the text. The collaborative close reading activity and the close reading essay sort of throw students into the deep end, at least at first, so that we hope they recognize that they already have intuitions and observations of their own about what's going on in a text and can, to some degree, give reasonable explanation of what they're seeing. But after they've gotten a taste of that, it quickly becomes apparent that they need some conceptual terminology to more precisely explain what they're seeing. This is where the lessons come in. As the semester progresses, you will introduce a few concepts to enhance their analysis. For example, one of the lessons is about metaphor, which is a powerful tool writers use to both make arguments and appeal to our emotions. There will be four prepared lessons like this, one for each unit. The close reading activity for unit one, metaphor in unit two, definition and distinction in unit three, and logic in unit four. We are calling these lessons close reading skills and placing them at the beginning of the unit so you have an opportunity to refer to them as you read and discuss the text in that unit. 
just to practice and enrich your discussion. If you sense it would be helpful, you could add these skills as requirements on the essays. You can just simply add uh, a requirement at the bottom. You must analyze one metaphor in the passage, for example. These three analytical concepts, metaphor, definition and distinction, and logic, in addition to the rhetorical lens, are a great foundation for close reading. But of course there are many more that we don't have time to teach. I plan to prepare a list of mini lessons on additional style concepts and should you want you can insert these at any point as you work through the course readings. These optional mini lessons include things like irony, tone, parallelism and antithesis and so on. However, let me underscore that the goal is not to have students saturate their essays with fancy terms. It's far more desirable that they make direct observations of their own and explain them as clearly as they can. We use tools to open the passage up and help them name what they are seeing, not to produce technical and artificial writing. Some students will not at first see the difficulty of this kind of writing. In some ways it may feel to them quite familiar even beneath them. You kind of quote some stuff, you talk about it. But typically students in this frame of mind are restating and summarizing rather than interpreting and arguing. Last year one of the things we found helped students was to emphasize that close reading is a new kind of writing, a new genre, which they have likely not encountered before. It may have some moves they are familiar with, but it is doing something new with them. And this can kind of become a camaraderie building frame of mind. The class must learn this new way of writing together. As I close this video, I'd like to note that while close reading is a solid foundation, the training wheels ultimately are meant to come off. We indicate this in at least a small way in the final assignment of the course, the journal assignment, which asks students to reflect on their learning in the course and trace the trajectory of their thinking in their journal entries. This is still a kind of close reading, they will be close reading their journal entries, but it turns what is in some ways the formal exercise of close reading to a real world application. It is writing toward self-discovery. So while we restrict their writing to focused analysis for most of the semester, we do this to enhance and ultimately affirm writing and reading and thinking as relevant and transformative as a way of being known. In the next part of the training, I am asking you to experience this kind of writing for yourself by taking the diagnostic time right and discussing your experience in the thread. I think you'll find it helpful and surprising when you do this kind of writing yourself and it'll inform your teaching and help you uh, much more naturally explain to students what they're trying to do in this kind of writing. I hope this video was helpful and I will um, See you in the discussion thread of the diagnostic time right and in the next video on rating and delivery.